And uh, now let's just do a little bit of um, our mapping project. And uh, we have um, this rather complex little polyline, and uh, we want it, and it is currently, look at the properties box, um, all at elevation zero as promised. And it's not closed, right? It's just a regular old polyline. And what I'd like to do is map this to the surface. So as I make it a feature line, I'm going to use uh, Create from Objects. And we're going to go into that same working site for now, uh, since uh, we want to talk in there. And uh, we'll use the same style that we did before. We'll let it just go to the default layer. And now I can decide what I want to do. Uh, do I want to erase the 2D polyline work? Well, yes, maybe no. We're going to erase it for now just to eliminate it. And I'd like to assign elevations uh, to it while I do so. And if it's very complicated, I may want to weed things. Right? We're just going to assign elevations to it for now and say OK. And it's going to say, where do I want to get them? Um, so I can do a bunch of work here. Um, uh, while I do it. A couple of things you got to watch out for. Um, I can grab uh, intermediate grade rate points. Now what that means is uh, there are triangles that sit in the surface between all the points in the surface and as my polyline crosses it would actually pick up those intermediate grade points. If I got a lot of triangles, you get a whole bunch of extra stuff inside your feature line you don't want. So most of the time you want that off, but sometimes it's really handy. Um, so we're going to map from that surface. Is that the surface I want to map from? No, I don't want the existing ground. I want the parking lot. Okay, so what I'm doing now is assigning elevations to my 2D polyline based on that uh, one per one and a half percent slope uh, that we created in the grading group. Pretty nifty. And viewer will show back up. And I end up with it, it converts, goes to my road line layer, but still looks like a grading line. Okay, so this is once again style driven. It has um, a uh, whole bunch of points, and you will see it pulls out the elevations uh, based on those locations. And so now I have an editable beast. Um, I can uh, turn it on and off if I have those intermediate points and you pulled them. Um, this will actually show the grade breaks. I can move this up and down uh, by default. I'd like to do uh, a quick profile here. And it wants to know what surfaces. So this will actually map the existing grade, which will be very simple. Um, what profile style I want to use um, for the existing. Makes sense. Um, my new one, I want to be a different color. So we'll just make it um, layout. And what profile view. Ship a whole bunch of them with Jumpstart. We'll just use um, out majors. And I do not want to draw the 3D stuff. And this makes a temporary profile so I can actually see uh, what's going on. There's my proposed and there's my existing. All right, so I can see how they actually map as they go across. So if I have to do uh, make a, a, a close match, I can do so. And you'll see that we are actually changing. We can delete. Um, out of this profile, we can actually delete um, some of the points and resample it and put vertical curves in it, and do all kinds of cool stuff uh, in my design profile. And um, this is all a temporary object. And when I, because uh, I made it as a quick profile, and it will, uh, next time I open and close the drawing, it won't be there. I'm just going to delete it for now. Uh, helpful little tool. Uh, for our purposes here. We can actually visually edit what's going on in here um, uh, by changing grade heads. If you pick, uh, let's see where it started, right? So it would also be possible to, uh, perhaps I would like to reverse this, and since it's a feature line, I could do that. So I'm going to close out of this for a sec and say, I'd really like to start out from on the street, so I'd like to reverse that feature line. 
And now when I go back to the editor, you can see as I pick my first station, uh, my little triangle uh, shows up right there. And so as I, I could work my way down here, and what I like to do is I'm going down about a percent and a half. That's great. Um, coming around this corner here, right, it's nearly flat as I make the corner. And um, I'd like that to be a 1% grade going up that way, so I go 1% to the next, right, and um, uh, now we're coming around the corner, I'm going to leave that as a 1% grade as we go around the corner. So I can continue to um, play with it um, that way. So you have pretty nice tools uh, to map this. Um, this feature line itself can actually be added to our surface that's a temporary surface. Um, just to make that point, right? Um, uh, since the surface has properties, and part of those properties are definitions, right? It will tell you where the data came from. So even the temporary surfaces uh, will take uh, break lines. So I can add and we'll just call it curb here as a break line and I can weed supplement as I do um, which is pretty cool so I can make sure that I fill things in right um, we'll leave weeds and we'll leave weeds at 10 and uh, put them in at 15 so you sample a little more off um, between what we got and that surface is now affecting the surface since they're very closely mapped um, and it should be uh, it shouldn't affect it dramatically but if I pick it pick the elevation editor and um, uh, change my increment and just make it two feet and raise all the elevations right by two feet, you can see the surface uh, modifies itself, right, in the background. So um, uh, extremely uh, dynamic, and the more of the dynamic stuff you throw in there, right, um, uh, you better make sure you're backing up. Uh, a couple of little tricks when you're starting to make a lot of changes to a temporary surface like this, you may want to take off this rebuild automatic uh, so you can add the stuff in and then do a manual rebuild uh, of your surface. That's particularly important since you don't want, if you're going to be adding uh, multiple feature lines uh, at once uh, to your surface in the same way you'd use your 3D polylines as break lines in a surface in LDT. Uh, you might not want the surface to update constantly as you do it. And so, uh, once again, rebuild automatic in general, you probably want off. You just got to remember to rebuild uh, your surfaces. And it's a good habit to turn rebuild automatic uh, back on um, uh, when you save and exit your drawing.